one thing I, one thing I forgot to tell everybody. After you connect the actuator, you can go ahead and put on the L bracket. Okay? Okay. You've seen me assemble it. Let's talk about it. Well, first note, you're going to hear gunshots. Don't worry. I live near a shooting range. Every once in a while we hear it. So you'll hear gunshots. I'll pause. So be it. What you do living in the country. Okay. Now, things you need to know. Okay. One, it's going to be shipped. You see the dimensions, the weight. Okay. I recommend if you get the lift gate option, do it unless you do a personally own a forklift. But even though it's real easy for them to use that lift gate and pop it right down to the ground and you can tow it anywhere you want. Okay. Things to, to understand when it comes, it's going to be coming out of Cresswell, Oregon, and then FedEx will handle it. And then on FedEx Tracker, you might not see anything after the pickup for a couple of days. It's because if it's on the wet East Coast, it's probably going to be railed. On the West Coast, I don't know. And in Central, I have no idea. So mine came out of Cresswell. I didn't see anything for three days and it showed up in Cicero, Illinois. Didn't see anything for a couple more days and it showed up in Georgia. And I got a phone call. Hey, we're going to deliver. Is this date great for you? Perfect. Bring it. So now when you see it in the crate and you're all astonished and ecstatic, be mindful. It's, it's still got fluids in it. It's going to have engine oil. It's going to have hydraulic fluid and it's going to have gasoline in the tank. Before you, uh, first time of operations, go ahead and replace the hydraulic fluid and replace the engine oil with what you're normally going to be using. Highly recommend it. The gas, pour in your gas. It's going to run ratty for probably about the first five to six minutes. It's probably going to run half choke. But then after a while, you'll hear the engine start running itself. It's happy again. It's because that bad gas is out of there. Or you can just siphon it out. It's up to you. Um, some other things that you might want to understand is that it's going to take you about six hours if you're by yourself. It'll probably take you less than that if you had somebody with you to help you. Okay? Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get do the walk around, shall we? This is your boom comparison to my height. Okay. You're going to have 13 different Zerk fittings that are going to be lined up. Notice the red? I love grease. I play in grease a lot. With this, your hydraulic actuators are going to come in already connected. They're going to come wrapped around the frame. Just take them off, lay them out, and you'll be able to determine exactly which one and where it goes. Be mindful you have neighbor kids too. Okay, with that being said, your Zert fittings are not really that good. You'll see in the picture down below what I ran into. I busted two of them. No fear. O'Reilly's came through. I replaced them. We're back up and running. Okay. But this is it. This is your bucket. It's a 12 inch bucket. Your configuration, everything, all the way up through. You have to be kind of careful. I don't like this because I did notice in operations that my, my hose protector is coming and it's chewing it up. So I don't like how it's floppy or any of that because this will may need to come through and what's happening is already starting to chew up on here so what I might do is make a rubber insert something for it just stuff to be careful with when you go and you're finally assembled make sure that you go back and you double check and torque all of your pin bolts okay your lock bolts it's a definite also when you've got this completely actuated or I mean completely connected and you're on here make sure that you put that tow pin in it's paramount and the reason why is if somebody hits that hydraulic uh, control lever up there she will drop to the ground and if your foot's there or a kid's there or a dog's there or whatever it's gonna get flattened so be mindful of that take them a glass off it's kind of weird okay so now that we've got that your uh, cleats your teeth whatever else everybody calls them you can remove them and probably replace them if you want to whatever or you can just use it as a um, it's a pretty stiff piece you could probably just use it as a scraper so yeah let's move on to the rest of it over here is your control box if you have ample or you have a, here's your control box if you have a chance get to a stencil machine or 
uh, tape machine or something. Make you some stuff over here so that you can, without trying to guess and trying to memorize, at least you know exactly what direction these levers go and what they're going to do. This is your hydraulic filter, it's your return filter. One thing about it, the part number is an SPX06 or a 08 times 25. It's an R1 British thread with 11 thread per inch. Over here is your throttle. Goes back to your engine. Enough said. This is your vent tube. Basically, once the oil gets up and if it gets up above, it pukes it out. That's why I have, you can't really see it, but I have the bucket down there because after you top it off, it's still going to barf out excessive amounts of hydraulic fluid. Just keep it there after you start really getting into it and then you know that it's not leaking anything and everything in your overflow. It's just basically an overflow. Okay? This is your seat. Goes in and out. Gunshot. Basically pull it out and then it'll lock. It'll go all the way back and you see that it won't touch anything back here. So you don't have to be worried whether or not you're going to whack something. Gun jobs. So the seat is adjustable. On the back back here, it's based, it's pretty neat. It's got a little knob. You go up and down and it's set so that it, the springiness is set upon your weight. It's a nice little add-on. Okay. Let's go to the engine. Wow. Okay. This is your hydraulic pump. This is your house from your engine to your hydraulic pump. One thing you need to be mindful of, take a look inside your dampener. You're going to see where your uh, engine and uh, your hydraulic pump connect. You're going to see red dampeners in there. Mine are already shredding and I have even a half hour on this yet. So I'm going to have to contact Besco and find out if we can get a replacement or make some new ones. I might do a video about that. Who knows? Move on. This is your uh, Zhangdong engine, 290 cc engine. Uh, this is your fuel on and off. This is your choke. This is your manual throttle. It's connected up there with that foot pedal. This is your basically your on and off switch. So you can start it or kill it, whichever. Metal gas tank, vent, filter, muffler. And then what I added was that little doohickey right there. Mine is an hour meter and a tachometer, tachometer, whatever else everybody wants to be all pronunciation-ish. Anyways, that right there is uh, an added saving grace that you want so that you can remind when you're gonna change the oil, how often you need to service, you know, lube, whatever. It's a good thing to have on there. It's real easy, you connect it to the spark plug wire and it does itself. Get the one with the battery so it's got the memory in there. It helps you a little bit easier. And you can turn this one on and off. Okay, this is your tow hitch. It's down here. You probably can't see it, no big deal. But when you get it, you're gonna get the ball. It's a 50 millimeter and it says 3,500 pounds. Am I gonna use it? I don't know. Probably give it to somebody, I don't know. This is one of your downriggers. You have another one on the side. This aids for you to go ahead and switch out. If you're going to bring the wheels up, put them back here. Or if you're going to go ahead and tow it, it'll help level up the back end for you. Okay. This is... This is funny. This is a temp gauge. And it's also somewhat of a level. But it really... Even in level, when it's level completely, it doesn't really show the fluid but yet I know where the fluid sits and when you operate it after a while you'll be able to feel the heat all the way up here when it's running of course it's the same as the other side down here is your actuator for your left and right it has a zerk fitting back here and a zerk fitting at the front like I said be careful with the zerk fittings they will break on you they're really cheesy. Pretty much what you see is what you get. This is where your outriggers uh, 
can be stored for travel. My pin don't line up on this side, so I don't have to blow a hole or grind out or something to configure it. But other than that, I really didn't see anything out of the ordinary that was bad. These are your tires. They're meaty. And they're okay. I mean, there's their tires. And another gunshot. So this is how your arm comes in. Um, this will, you'll, you've seen in the assembly video. So pretty much that's about it in a nutshell. Um, things that you might want to look at doing is getting a hold of anti-skid paint <clears throat> or tape and putting it on here. Because I guarantee you after a while, this is, I mean, this is smooth as it is, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you'll want something there. I know it's a great product. I personally am glad I chose to get it because I've got to do some French drains. The past two and a half years, my other French drains have been overworked and uh, I've got to put more in if I want to get rid of the water. And I'll be doing this for my neighbors. There's four of us in my section of our little horseshoe and I think this little monster will do it. I'll have videos of that. So, if you got any questions or anything, feel free to ask. If I can answer them, I'll be happy to. I did put in hydraulic fluid that I used was ISO 46 Traveler from Tractor Supply. The engine oil, just plain old 10W30 STP. Um, I'll switch, if I do a lot of summer work, I'll switch it back over to 30HD. But all in all, that's it. Oh, gas anything above 87 don't put it any e85 or none of that crap in there uh, it says e10 <laughs> no nah, I don't recommend it now my shout out to one person chicken honk farmstead he's the one that got me into this direction I liked his videos I liked how he talked about it I liked how he dealt with it I liked how it worked I liked his videos that are dealing with this they're great so I hope this video has helped you. I hope that you like it. Um, if you have any questions, of course, always feel free to ask. Um, if there's anything else you can think of dealing with this piece of equipment, don't hesitate to ask. That's how we all work together. We all take care of each other. Anyways, this is Travis. I will talk to y'all later. Y'all have a safe, great day, okay? Bye. One thing I forgot was the manuals. This is your engine manual with your spark plug wrench. This was taped to the hydraulic filler port. This was in a, kind of a clear plastic bag laying on top of it. Okay, you'll notice what I highly recommend is if you're ordering this and getting it, just go ahead and download the manuals. You can get this one from the actual Besco. These you'll have to hunt down and get them from J, you know, Zhang Dong's websites, okay? The thing is, what you got to look at is this is a C290JF290, and inside here it refers to it as just a plain old 270cc. Okay? In the manual, they're both almost identical. Basically, you have your specifications talking about what it is. This one just doesn't really tell you what the horsepower is, but this one does. Um, just goes through ops checks knowing your engine one thing to look at is the spark plugs it, re it re <coughs> says recommended spark plug is the BPR 6ES NGK or the Dunso um, this one came with the torch you'll see it okay I'm gonna pull it out and put the NGKs in there but the maintenance manual of this is just basically the same thing helpful suggestions but over here it's referring to the engine as uh, 10 bhp brake horsepower so when you read this stuff and go through it just be mindful none no three or, or none of the manuals actually tie real good to each other but basically this is your assembly and the parts manual and everything when you go through it you'll see they're our warnings notices the assembly process you're gonna notice the big things in here a lot of this stuff does not match what your machine looks like 
It's an outdated manual. I mean, it's showing four controllers. There's actually only two that's kind of inner levered. So you just have the one sitting here and then you can do it like that. The toe doesn't match. The um, hydraulic filler port is on the other side. It's not on this side. It doesn't have an air hole except the way it's showing it's above the thermometer. It's not. It's actually on the other side and that neon tube is what it is. The engine configuration, the seats don't, I mean, you're going to go through it. It's, the last time this thing was updated was 2018. Here we are two years later, and a lot of this stuff doesn't really pertain. It's like the lube chart, the lube chart showing flush fittings in certain spots down the neck, but kind of, if you look at this, it kind of looks kind of funny. It almost looks like the same one that uh, Harbor Freight has. So, all in all, you can record your spark plug number. Just little things here and there. Sorry, I'm kind of, kind of going fast, but it's better just go ahead and go to the websites and download it and read it that way at your leisure. But that's about it. And the other reason that it's good to go ahead and download this one is this one does not really have an itemized parts listing. The downloadable one does. It's the same date, but for some reason it has a downloadable. Okay. Hope that helped you. Y'all have a great day. Thank you for watching. Bye.